You introduce yourself first and then me. Okay. Hi guys. Hey, I won't do it. I promised April I wouldn't give you guys the Carol Basking greeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello everybody. This is the DCB Greenhouse. Um, this is Amy and April, you'll see in a second, coming from you live. And today, instead of doing like a traditional activity because we're a little short on time today, we are going to do just a kind of a general, real quick greenhouse update. And there are some really neat things going on at the greenhouse that we wanted to show you. So I'm going to switch this over to April and let her take over the tour. Hi everybody, this is April here, coming at you from the DCB jungle. Um, we just wanted to show you some things here. Okay, so if you want to come this way, you can maybe see our koi. They might be shy right now. I think we can see them a little bit. Those are our, our little, and our duckweed with those guys. Pretty neat. April, April and some of the students, well, like we talked in our first tour, these were, uh, some of the, all these items were donated. But it was April and some of our students' uh, great brain power that was able to put <laughs> this together. She even, you know, designed the planter and the pumps, and this is why we had a great home for koi yeah, during the winter. Yeah, we actually had to make this filter. It's a, uh, there's a pond pump down inside there, pumping the water up. <laughs> 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 that is mouthful, this one. Well, the plant will love it. Don't anyway. just ignore all the mealy bugs that are <laughs> we, on that. On the we have this in full there. of uh, these bio balls, and I drilled holes in this bucket, and the water breaks out. It's anyway, a little messy. <laughs> it's kind of a natural filtering system. But this pothos plant just absolutely loves it in here. Um, that's the neat thing about pothos plants. Uh, they're kind of a really traditional, you know, house plant, and they come a lot of great colors and shapes. But they literally can be almost completely submerged in water, roots, and everything, and they are just happy. They're definitely yeah, they one of those can. plants you can't overwater. So we're gonna show you another plant. That's All right. Over here we have my beta Casper. Isn't he pretty? <laughs> he's a white one, and he's <laughs> actually a daddy. We just bred some betas. The female is a. Uh, she has a white body and red fins. So I'm curious to see what the babies look like. I think we ended up with about. 14 babies not sure yet they're not in here with him though they're in my office um, but anyways this is a peace lily and they're another plant that can survive with the root system completely submerged in there. water and uh, they betas love to hang out in the roots and they just kind of lay in the roots they feel safe like a, a hammock kind of for fish <laughs> Can you see him all right? Oh yeah, okay. it was beautiful. All right, we'll show you some cool things going on around the greenhouse right now. Some, thing, some things we have in bloom. This is one of my favorites. This is a tuberous begonia. Iron cross begonia Iron sometimes cross. they're called. Yeah, it's kind of got right. that old school uh, cross-like uh, coloring on its leaves. It has a weird texture on the leaves and the flowers have little tiny thorns on them. Look at me, I don't know if they're I can see it. I can't get it to you zoom. Can't focus. I can't focus on them, but they're really, teeny tiny. Really, really interesting. Um, we have this guy blooming. What, what are these called? I am not sure. I can never remember their name. <laughs> but they're really pretty. And it's kind of our own little version of, uh, what's, what bonsai. are they? Bonsai. Bonsai, there we go. Yeah. Okay, let's <laughs> go over here. This is probably... Oh, I always say they're all my favorites, so I can't decide. Anyways, this is one of my favorites. This is a hibiscus. Isn't that gorgeous, guys? It's huge. Look at the size of that thing. And then we have uh, our lime trees are really blooming like mad here. Get and they focus. smell so good. They smell like jasmine. I mean, right now, the whole greenhouse is smelling fragrant from these. Oh, farms. it's beautiful. It's Oh, you can't forget the pineapple. They're doing well. You guys saw them last time. So, yeah, they're still growing. We've got our three in there. Um, hopefully, either next week or sometime in the future, we'll show you guys how you can get your own pineapple plant going on your own at your home. Yeah. Though, you probably won't get it to put fruit unless you've got a lucky enough to have a, a year-round greenhouse like us. So, here we have... Oh, look bed, at all that stuff. So we are just going, guys. Our trays sit on these these heat mats, so I can set whatever temperature I want on these. 
we seed our whatever we're trying to grow and cover it with a dome and that holds humidity in place which seeds need to germinate they need humidity lots of it but after that you have to be careful because then, the, then humidity causes pest and disease issues yeah we too much humidity <laughs> plants can be are bad so too. needy yeah, i swear like not too much not too much <laughs> Anyways, after we they get too big for these flats, oh here, show them this flat, baby. Okay, this is butterfly weed. So this Ooh. is actually a native pollinator plant. We're gonna plant in a native pollinator garden. Um, when the plants start getting their true leaves, about this size is when we transplant them. So then we move them into these six packs. These were just transplanted yesterday I think or maybe even today so then they're gonna go in some six-pack plant planters like this move on to this table we have lots of petunias here um, our student Josh has been helping us transplant these petunias they're looking great just remember horticulture is deemed a necess a essential task by the governor and the Department of Ag in North Dakota. So support your local garden centers uh, and you know, but, but still practice safe distancing practices. Yep. So most of the stuff you're seeing here, we did start from seed ourselves, but there's some things uh, that you cannot buy from seed. And some things you can't buy from seed because they're actually patented. Like these, <laughs> oh, they're uh, beautiful though. Sky petunias. Look at those, look at Aren't the. Look at the little star shapes and yeah, spots on go. them. I tell them where these, these babies are going to be going this year. So these are going to go in the Botno City Planters. We're going to do Botno Public School colors in our downtown city planters. So that's going to be purple and white. We're going to have a variety of textures and different kinds of plants. But that's where these guys are going to go. And these guys I am so excited for. This dark purple and that light lime green back here. These are ornamental sweet potatoes, guys. Whoever thought something that you eat can also be considered an ornamental pretty plant. Just look at that vibrant, vibrant, pale lime green and oh, that deep, deep purple. Just beautiful. So sweet potatoes are actually not related to a normal potato at all. Uh, a normal potato, the leaves are toxic, okay? Sweet potato leaves are actually edible. A lot of people don't know that. They're actually really yummy. I don't know if I've ever eaten. When I was in Peace Corps in Zambia, we used to eat sweet potato leaves, and then also all your squash leaves are edible as well. Let's go around the other way. We have some fuchsias we'll be selling at the plant sale in a few weeks, probably three or four weeks from now, maybe five. And these guys will be potted up in uh, uh, big pots, uh, hanging, hanging baskets. baskets. There we go. Lots of really pretty stuff going on. So these are going to go on campus. This is called Jester Millet. It starts out this chartreuse color, and as it matures, it's going to turn a deep burgundy and get these uh, deep burgundy. Uh, seed heads on it that are beautiful and and birds can eat them actually. <laughs> our cannas are coming up really nicely, our canna lilies. Yep. You guys, if you were around Botno last uh, summer, you would have noticed the cannas were kind of the showpiece in a lot of the planters around town. So we'll be utilizing these, not in probably the planters this year, right? But they um, will be here on campus. Yeah, these are going to be on campus this year. And these were donated to us by Sandy Hagness from the business office. The original plants and they just expand every year our collection grows a little bit so these guys are bulbs right they're not chromes they're, they're, just, they're uh, i think they're, they're chromes? i think they're corn corn okay so but anyways these guys come back every year but they're not hardy to north dakota it's too cold to leave them in the ground so every if we have them in the ground or in pots every fall we'll dig them up and we store them here in the greenhouse in like a cool dark area and then we'll reuse them every year yeah interesting thing about canna is also is that they are another plant that can grow with its root system completely submerged. So you can actually see them around the edges of ponds and that sort of thing. Um, here is oh, so one pretty. of my favorite foliage plants that we have here. This is uh, called King or Kong Empire Coleus. The leaves are gonna get about six inches wide and the colors are just so vibrant. These are neat because they can handle and actually kind of like a little bit of shade. It's hard to find 
uh, colorful, exciting plants that like to grow in shade areas. So that's why I'm excited about these. <laughs> Here's another kind of coleus. This oh, look at those colors. A rainbow mix. Hey, look how bright that is. Just looks like a kaleidoscope. Oh, these are. Oh, look at that. Look at that orange in that. Pretty amazing. Peach. So we'll Beautiful. put these in pots around campus, and uh, we have more than what we need, so we'll end up selling some also. Our one, our one, our one sad alyssum plant that sneaked in with some seed. <laughs> so if you guys have ever had alyssum in your your hanging baskets or anything like that, the reason why we're not using alyssum anymore is flea beetles just and or canola beetles just absolutely love these guys, and it will and like I had some in some planters last year. One day they were beautiful, the next day they had really been eaten up. So we've just decided here at the greenhouse they're just too much of a pest magnet. But one did sneak in this summer, so we're gonna see how long we keep it going in the greenhouse. <laughs> Every now and then you'll, you'll start seeds, and uh, something that wasn't supposed to be in the seed packet will be. And that's what happened there. It was just a mix up. So you have some dianthus here. Um, this is gonna have a hot pink flower on it. Um, these are my favorite. I see that about too many you plants. You just really like plants. <laughs> guys, we haven't noticed. We're both kind of just plant geeks, and we're very proud of it. This is Celosia Dragon's Breath. So the leaves are starting to turn darker and darker. Uh, as this plant matures, the leaves will be solid, this kind of fuchsia burgundy color, and it's going to put up these big flower heads that look like a... Uh, coxcomb maybe? Yeah. Or like a, a fire-breathing dragon breathed it out. I guess that's why it's dragon's breath, right? If anyone went to the International Peace Gardens last year and saw their fire, their um, annual flower display that looked like a fire pit, these guys were kind of that front and center, gave that shimmering uh, flame look to that design, correct? Yep, that's yep. actually where I saw these and I took a picture and said, we are growing that next year. So. <laughs> uh, our uh, food crop table. Yep. These are all things that are going to be sold or transplanted on campus uh, to provide food for Sodexo, our on-campus uh, dining service. This is Nasturtium. Nasturtium. Yeah. I absolutely love these guys. You actually, let's see if I can show you one second. The flowers are absolutely delicious. It's like a spicy, crunchy radish taste. So, yum. <laughs> yeah, I come out here every day and maybe thin the flowers out a little bit. <laughs> Perks of working in a greenhouse. Right, we have some basil here. Look how pretty that's actually growing. actually needs to be pruned back. And oh, yeah, when needs... we prune these things in the greenhouse, the edible food crops, we're able to um, eat that too, which is awesome. You guys have no idea how good that smells. Probably um, prune that and make pesto out of the prunings. So we have green onions here. We were going to be hosting a... a an event through farms um, in April that ended up being canceled. There was going to be a farm to dinner uh, event that we were going to grow some produce for. So that's what these green onions were grown for. <laughs> no longer. But we will find a use for them. We have some bulbing onions here. And these will just be split apart and planted right in the ground. They do better than sets do. And yes, we know you're not usually supposed to start those in like little all packed together usually we're supposed to do them separately that was not our fault it was a miscommunication with a uh, student worker then that's why they're you know all what? bunched like I've that but they're still growing really I've well i've grown them like this too and they'll be okay we'll soak them in water and split them up and they'll be fine so this plant is really interesting this is called stevia so the it's a natural sugar substitute you can actually find powdered uh processed stevia in your local grocery store in the baking aisle it just, it tastes like, it's so sweet. I it mean, tastes like a, like a two teaspoon of sugar, honestly. It does. It's good. Um, it's calorie free, too. Yeah, that's like, a lot of your, your uh, calorie free uh, sweeteners now have stevia yeah. in it. We can literally come to this table and like forage for our lunch just about. <laughs> um, Pretty this much. This is mojito mint. So this is one of those things I said we can't buy everything from seed. This specific mint variety has to be bought, bought as plugs, and then we transplant them into pots. Everything that was available for seed, we did start from seed, though. This is my personal favorite kind of mint. Um, and not just the mojitos. It's good in mojitos, <laughs> but it's also just good in some water with cucumber. Or, or strawberries. That's my favorite. Is a pitcher of strawberries and mint. Oh, that sounds 
good. I've uh, <laughs> made ice cream with this kind of mint before too. It's really good. We have some oregano, an older rosemary plant. I'm gonna trim this up and make uh, use the, the trimmings as cuttings. And so we would try and grow some new plants out of that. Some Swiss chard, herbs, uh, lots of different kinds of peppers here. And I'm really proud of April because I have never gotten sage to actually propagate for me, like from seed. And she pretty much got all of her sage to go. So I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, it's probably the nice warm heat and the heat pads, but I never can get it to work for me. Um, we have all kinds of tomatoes and peppers. I had uh, a student worker come through here and thin these out earlier today. So he basically, I told him to pick the strongest plant in each uh, cell and trim the, the others out. So it's really survival of the fittest in the greenhouse. But these are to the point where they need to be transplanted to the next size pot. And I'll show you over here that you can grow that. So um, Josh has pruned off the cotyledon leaves and planted these deep. So all that stem is buried in there and that will actually become root system and we'll end up with a healthier plant. Only downside of Facebook Live, it's hard sometimes to get things to, to focus. Oh, I wish you guys yeah. could see that. And I'm just trying to get it so you guys can, oh, there we go, it focused a bit. So yeah, she actually planted it half of its depth, which is pretty cool. So that is going to conclude our tour for the day, I think. Unless yeah. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, Amy? No, I think that's, that's good for today. You know, catch us next week. I think, oh, it's not for sure, but I believe we'll probably what we'll do is we're going to show you guys how to propagate, uh, ooh, sorry, pineapples and avocados uh, that you buy from the grocery store in your own home. So and maybe some other kinds of fruit seeds, but don't get your hopes up about those because they're from not going to grow outside of North Dakota. <laughs> you, uh, but it's still really kind of cool to have a av little avocado to grow in your fun kitchen. To try, yeah. Yep. So we'll be back next Thursday at 3 o'clock. Yep. For that. So yeah, we'll continue going at three today. It was just early because we have a, a meeting on campus. So we had to kind of change things up today. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you everybody. Bye for guys. See you next week. That one's okay. Bye. <laughs>